Speaker. Uh, Sue Moroni. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and um, it is a pleasure to rise and speak to the Dairy Industry Restructuring Amendment Bill, the second reading of this bill, in fact, uh, with its new sunset provisions. But as much as, a, uh, as much as I'm pleased to rise and speak to this bill, isn't it disappointing? Disappointing that um, the last two weeks this place has been in what we uh, euphemistically call a recess, and during that period of time, speaking with people out on the streets and, and ordinary what their issues are at the moment, what they want to see from this government is some sort of plan, any kind of plan, that would show that they've been thinking about what's happening with the economy, what's happening to our economy, because it's flatlining. And here we are. This is the best that they can come up with. This is the best that they can come up with that represents anything looking like a plan. Well, it's, it's actually extending some provisions that Labor put in place, that the previous government put in place, um, to ensure that there was competition in the dairy industry. Now, that was a wise move at the time, but we were in completely different economic times to what we are currently. What New Zealanders want from that lot over there is they want some plan to actually deliver economic growth. And this is what we're debating instead. And I think it's very, very disappointing, Mr Speaker, because while it's you know, just, just allowing a situation that was already happening to continue to happen for a small period longer, it doesn't do anything to fundamentally shift and grow the economy, and that's what this country needs to do. So it's very disappointing. But look, I think there's also another missed opportunity in this as well, Mr Speaker. And it's the missed opportunity of thinking about what else we should be thinking about in this parliament about the dairy industry and that, that aspect of competition. Because what I'm interested in, Mr Speaker, is that the competitors that this bill um, forces Fonterra to subsidise, their, their competitors, as I think the Green Party quite rightly pointed out, those same competitors don't have to live by the same rules and regulations with regard to labour standards that Fonterra does. And I think that's a very great shame. And that's something really positive that actually this parliament could de be debating, because I would look forward to, to debating a bill that said, look, it doesn't matter whether you're Fonterra or your open country cheese or your Sinlay or whoever you may be, if you employ people to process dairy products, then you should actually have decent wages and conditions that go with that. And we don't have that in this country, Mr Speaker. And that was the subject of a very lengthy and bitter dispute in the Waikato and the small, um, small village, the small community of Waharoa, in fact, just last year. And the Minister of Labour, Kate Wilkinson, is sitting over there, and she knows this, that what caused that dispute was actually industrial legislation that means that Fonterra's competitors can substantially have lower wage costs than what Fonterra itself agrees to, and that's all OK. So from that government's perspective, they don't have a problem at all with low wages um, being paid in the dairy industry, or any other industry for that matter, any other industry. They don't care that there, is no good law, that there are no good laws in place to make sure that there are decent wages paid. They're quite happy, quite happy with um, having, well, as Bill English said, they see it as it being a competitive advantage, in fact, that we have wages that are 30% lower than Australia. So if this government does have an economic plan, that appears to be about the amount of it. Bill English's plan, backed up by John Key and I guess the rest of the Cabinet as well, that actually is a great thing says the national government, it's a great thing to have low wages in this country because that's apparently our, com our point of competition. So my guess is that on this issue, that government would see, think it's a great thing as well, that, that there's competition that Sinlay and Open Country Cheese can significantly undercut Fonterra by paying lower wages to the workforce, even though those workers are doing exactly the same job as that they would be doing for Fonterra.
But no, we have silence from the government on that issue because low wages is something that they don't really care about, um, even though they know, well, if they're out there doing their jobs, they should know that ordinary New Zealanders face a week-to-week and day-to-day struggle to make ends meet because wages are standing still if they're not going backwards and cost, the cost of living, primarily driven, as John Key said quite rightly in question time today, primarily driven by that government's desire to increase GST on every single food item or any other item that people buy at all, That's, those are the issues that are confronting ordinary New Zealanders. So there's a lost opportunity on those grounds. And then there's a further lost opportunity. And that further lost opportunity is to do with milk prices, because we know that that's a significant issue. Well, oh well, Sandra Gowdy says, never let the facts get in the way of a good story. Well, let me share some facts with that member, because she may not have heard it from the people who she claims to represent, but she should be listening, because this is what ordinary New Zealanders will tell her, that the price of milk and other dairy products has skyrocketed under national, and this bill will do very little to change that. It will do nothing to change it, in fact. New Zealanders have been feeling the squeeze at the checkout as the price of food has increased by 5.5% in the last year. And since April 2008, a litre of home brand milk at Food Town has increased by 20% or 37 cents. So with minimal wage increases, Kiwis are finding it harder and harder to afford the basics as families cut back on dairy goods and the health of New Zealanders, and particularly young children, will suffer because of high prices for dairy goods. But is this government interested in that issue? Well, it would seem not, because Sandra Gowdy wants to deny that there's even an issue out there with the price of milk, with the price of anything. And yet here we are debating a bill about the dairy industry, about restructuring the dairy industry, and does it go near this issue at all? No way. Well, I'd ask Sandra Gowdy if she's done her homework, because I think that she should look at the cost of living statistics that came out recently that show how high the cost of food has gone up in this country. And think about what's happening to people's wages. Well, well, here we go. Here we go. Sandra Gowdy's forgotten about the minimum wage increasing every single year under the Labor government. She's conveniently forgotten about how wage increases happened regularly for workers across all industries under the Labor government. And she has forgotten that there was the lowest unemployment in the OECD actually achieved by Labor when it was in government. Contrast that to what's happening under national, well, it doesn't even rate a comparison. But I just challenge that member and all of those members opposite just to go out and talk to ordinary people and ask them this one question. It's a simple question, doesn't take long. Do you feel better off? That's the question I challenge every single member of the National Party to go out and ask people on the street, because I can tell them that the answer to that question is no, people do not. They feel worse off under this government, and they feel worse off because they are actually worse off under this government, because that government put up GST, and it actually put their prices up on every single thing that they buy, and has done nothing to create growth which would actually lift people's wages. It has done nothing to reduce unemployment, which would actually create jobs and incomes for families as well. So, look, here we are, Dairy Industry Restructuring Amendment Bill. Um, Interesting little bill. will do nothing to actually um, improve economic performance, but isn't that the hallmark of that government? We'll do nothing to actually reduce unemployment, and isn't that the hallmark of this government? And we'll do nothing to resolve price increases for ordinary families, and isn't that also the hallmark of that government? Sandra Gowdy. Mr Speaker, I'm delighted to be getting up.